They were pretty tight by the time they hit the bars on the west side. He spoke to Helen with sarcasm as they fell into the liquor chasm. Her sensitivity was heightened and she tried not to be offended. She would not sit beside him and he tried not to show that it upset him. What? Am I the plague? Ebola? Mad cow disease, he asked. No, I want to be able to taste my own drink, that's all. A foot closer to you, and all anyone knows is whiskey. Don't you think you ought to drink some water? Helen, he said, I appreciate you looking out, but I'm no more wasted than you. Watch me run this game. He stood tall over the felt with much attention to his opponent's movements around the table measured the man's self-confidence, then drew his cue and leaned forward without a marked change in expression and drove the white one firmly with backspin and heard the leather of a corner pocket catch the ten ball which fell off the table. He spun the cue into the chalk and thought a shot ahead, planned, knew where he wanted to leave. The little intrigue that remained was a question of execution. That he put to rest with a firm shot through his knuckles that spread chalk dust like blue mist over the lush but barren field. The shot would have made Black Bear proud. The seven balls left on the table remained still in the balance of it under the fluorescent night, quiet and composed glistening without shadows, and he intended to put them properly away while the eight ball watched darkly, and he forgot completely everyone around him except for her, and he felt how upset she had been, and his head was clear, and he felt sorry, and took the game hard and mercilessly.